So we got a pretty interesting life. I think I'm starting to change the lifestyle up a bit. And I, I just noticed that, especially when I got dressed in, when the elders are here, they're fine because I can go on further with them. But I think when I'm, I'm, I'm inviting families in, um, I'm keeping the time frame down just so to cater for everybody. But sometimes it can go on too long. I miss you so much, Missy. Missy. Uh, okay. No, I just want to hurry up and come home. <laughs> I'm going to come home for a visit. It's been too, way too long. We've been here eight years now. Eight years. Eight years? Uh, yeah, we've been here too long. I know, I need to come home. But our borders are just not opening up. Um, not anytime soon, anyway. But thank you, Facebook, for giving us a platform to see our family, to share a message, to uh, uplift people, enlighten people's minds and hearts and, and all the good stuff, eh? So I'm really grateful for this. Um, I've got a visitor today. I actually got a, um, a single mom, and her name is Etty, and she lives in Melbourne. She'll be joining me later with her two babies. Um, her husband was a very good friend of ours, uh, and so we're going to come in and sing a song later. But I'll go through all the stuff that, you know, all the doctrine stuff, and, and today's lesson is all about Emma Smith. Now, I don't want to go too much into it, because I think everybody knows about her, but I'll touch on the important facts um, from the scripture. If you want to add your two cents worth, or share some insights about her, or what you studied, or even do it in the comments. Um, so yeah, before we get started, welcome again to everybody. And we come in later on. Just thank you for just even taking the time to, to, to come in and, and say hi. And um, I got my wake up call yesterday when I was reminded how important this, this live is for some people. And sometimes I might get, you know, focus on my own things. Sometimes that I'm, well, I'm, I'm past hunting at the moment, and it's a, a bit of a real, um, not a struggle. It's just, it's just something that you, you hate doing, <laughs> especially here in, in, in Australia, you know. Um, and at the moment here, there's like uh, hundreds, hundreds, thousands of people looking for homes because they're all getting kicked out of their homes. There's um, some kind of uh, policy uh, from the government that uh, March the 29th um, is the date where um, tenants, well, how do you say, tenants are getting kicked out because there's this policy in place that protects them because of COVID and um, a lot of landlords are choosing to sell their homes and it's a good time for them to do it. And it's just a COVID thing, eh? Uncertain times, people losing their jobs, people are a little bit worried about money, finances and their assets. So, yeah, it's hurting us little people who don't own their homes. Um, but, anyway, we've, we've got a couple of uh, people who are uh, opening up um, doors for us. So, yeah, we're really grateful. We're in a good place compared to the many, the gazillions that are, um, you know, some of them sleeping in their cars, that's just a bit of reality here. 
And I guess some of that has happened in New Zealand too. It has been for some time. Anyway, we just be grateful. Hey, you don't complain. We just be grateful. Carry on. Um, so I have been a little bit sidetracked and I'm doing some of this. Anyway, don't worry about me. I'm good. I'm all good. Um, so before we get into our um, live today, we always need to start with a prayer. Um, yeah, I invite the spirit to be here, okay? So, um, before I do that, I'd just like to say thank you to everybody that has been coming forward and, and being a bit more involved in the, in the group. Um, interaction is good. I think we learn from each other. doesn't matter how much we know or don't know. Um, it, it's good hearing each other. It's good learning from each other. It's good seeing each other. So, um, after this week, uh, being able to go out and do some service, I think we're going to try and be a bit, little bit more visual and show people what we actually do um, to take our mind off our problems. Anyway, let's start with the prayer, okay? Just when my favorite song comes on, it's when I want to say that. Anyway, let's take it. Our dear Father in heaven, we thank thee for this wonderful day. We thank thee for the many wonderful blessings that thou hast blessed us with this day. We are grateful for the learning opportunities um, that we have experienced today. And we are mindful of those who are going through um, difficult times and going through struggles or grief and loss um, or many sorrows. We pray for a blessing of comfort for them and their families. Um, we pray also for Spirit to be with us as we uh, prepare ourselves to learn more about um, Emma Smith and uh, counsel she was given and maybe liken it to ourselves and find some understanding in the things that we will discuss today. I'm grateful Father for all our blessings and pray that they will be with us this day and these things we humbly pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. Amen. Let's get into the lesson. So before we get started, I know there's people here that don't know who Emma Smith is. Um, if you would like to give your own definition or, or um, insight to who she who she was, then feel free to do so. So um, Emma is the wife of Joseph Smith. And the um, question is, what was she chosen to do? And how can we liken ourselves to her? as we go through our lesson today. Um, I think the best way to answer all those questions is really to just go straight to the scriptures and let's see what we have here. So the topic for today's lesson is Emma is an elect lady. Um, and the word that stands out to me is the word elect. And um, the definition for elect is people who are chosen or singled out. So um, this section is just for her. It is counsel to her from Heavenly Father and the counsel that she's given is, is her role in the restoration of the church and what she is to do and I think like right at the end of the, of the section it tells us that you know everything that was said to her we can it, it is for all of us really counsel is for all of us so I guess what I would encourage you to do is just listen carefully as I read or follow along Try and pick one counsel that stands out to you and um, that you can relate to, okay? Okay, let's get on to it. Ah, uh, section 25, Doctrine and Covenants, Revelation given through Joseph Smith, the prophet at Harmony, Pennsylvania, July 1830. This revelation manifests the will of the Lord to Emma Smith, the prophet's wife. Um, it's funny that we, it's international uh, women's day week um, and I love that everything that we've been doing this week is kind of like a line to um, the it's in the uh, I like for us sisters and being about Emma Smith <sighs> perfect timing um, okay so Emma Smith an elect lady is called to aid and comfort her husband she's also called to write to expound scriptures and select hymns some of the righteous is a prayer unto the Lord. Principles of obedience in this 
revelation are applicable to all. There we go. It's, it's relative to all of us. Good counsel for all of us. Verse 1. Hearken unto the, verse, the voice of the Lord your God while I speak unto you. Emma Smith, my daughter, for verily I say unto you, all those who receive my gospel are sons and daughters in my kingdom. I love that he addresses Emma. Um, Emma, my daughter. I love that. Verse 2. A revelation I give unto you concerning my will. And if thou art faithful and walk in the paths of virtue before me, I will preserve thy life. And thou shalt receive an inheritance in Zion. I like there that there's a promise that if she is faithful, if thou art faithful and walk in the paths of virtue, that the same thing like us, the promise, blessing is, I will preserve thy life. And as I read those words, preserve thy life, I know that Emma Smith did go through, um, you know, a few maybe um, difficult times um, giving birth to her children and she lost a few children. Um, but yeah, that came to my mind when it said, I will preserve my life. So I guess, you know, the Lord just looked after her. I don't know. Um, I will preserve my life. I don't know what she went through, eh? I, just, I don't know what she went through. Uh, I couldn't imagine what she went through, especially with, with losing her children. But I, I guess there would be a lot of grief in there. A lot of things that she would have had to deal with. Um, and I think her receiving this would have been a way for her to, to stay strong through it all. Okay, verse 3. Behold, thy sins are forgiven thee, and thou art an elect lady, whom I have called. Verse 4. Murmur not because of the things which thou hast not seen, for they are withheld from thee and from the world which is wisdom in thee, and in the time to come. I like that word, murmur not. It's good counsel for us. Verse 5, you know, sometimes us uh, sisters mm, do a bit of murmuring. Verse 5, and the office of thy calling shall be for the comfort unto my servant, Joseph Smith Jr., thy husband, and oh, and the office of thy calling shall be for a comfort unto my servant, Joseph Smith Jr., my husband, in his afflictions, with consoling words in the spirit of meekness. I actually like that part too, and I'll come back to that because that is the folk, that is the counsel. If, if anything, that is the counsel that stands out to me today. Um, yeah, and I'll talk a bit more about that later. Uh, verse 6 And thou shalt go with him in the time of his going, and be unto him for a scribe. Wilt thou, while thou, while there is no, while there is no one to be a scribe for him, that I may send my servant over the couch with the so ever I will. Okay, so she is to be a scribe for her husband um, in the translating of the Book of Mormon. Uh, verse 7, And thou shalt, some of these things we all do as wives, And thou shalt be ordained under the hand to expound scriptures and to exhort the church according as it shall be given thee by my spirit. For he shall lay his hands upon thee, and thou shalt receive the Holy Ghost, and thy time shall be given to writing and to learning much. Uh, verse 9 And thou needest not fear, for thy husband shall support thee in the church, for unto them, unto them is his calling, and all things might be revealed unto them whatsoever I will, according to their faith. Verse 10 And verily I say unto thee, that thou shalt lay aside the things of the world, of this world, and seek for the things of a better. Great counsel, um, especially for us. Lay aside the things of this world and seek for the things of a better. Of a better, you know, good counsel, really good counsel for us today. We get a bit sidetracked with the things of the world uh, very easily. Um, verse eleven: Thou shalt be given thee also to make a selection of sacred things, which is another part I'll touch on. As it shall be given thee, which is pleasing unto me, to be had in my church. For my verse twelve, for my soul delighteth in the song of the heart, yea, the song of the righteous is a prayer unto me, and it shall be answered with a blessing upon thee, who is beautiful. Um, wherefore lift up thy heart, and rejoice and cleave unto the covenants which thou hast made. Verse fourteen, continue in the spirit of meekness, and be beware of pride, 
that thy soul delight in thy husband, and the glory which shall come upon him, another good counsel. And uh, where it says, continue in the spirit of meekness. Um, I'd like to kind of like add to that. Continue in the spirit of humility and beware of pride. And I think a, a sister in her position, being the, the wife of the prophet, uh, would get some attention. And um, But I just really like her example as being so meek and humble and, and submissive, especially to her husband, especially on some, you know, it, it, I think it would have just given him comfort to know that his wife was on board with all things that he did. And she was also um, mindful of his needs and, I don't know, just the extra comfort that he would need, um, especially with all the, you know, affliction that he experienced and the persecution, you know. Verse 15, keep my commandments continually, and a crown of righteousness shall, uh, thou shalt receive, and except thou do this, where, where I am, you cannot come. Uh, verse 16, and really I say unto you that this is my voice unto all, amen. So it is counsel for everybody. So what did you like from that verse? I mean, from that section, what is it that you popped out to you? <sighs> and if, um, if you come into the live later, you know, feel free to share what verse uh, stood up to you. What was your favorite? Oh, she is here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you a, a little bit um, longer to settle yourself in. I'm just going to go through a couple of quotes and experiences. I've just finished reading the scripture and then I'll pop you in very shortly, okay? Um, Etty, so you can flutter around for about another five minutes and then I'll bring you on camera. Um, so just, there's two points I wanted to point out before Etty comes into the live, because she's got young ones, so I'm mindful of that. I don't want to, you know, go on too long. So, um, the two points I wanted to point out is the point in verse 5, where it says, comfort your husband and his afflictions. And this has been, it's funny how I always have these experiences before I come into the lives, um, and I don't ask for them, they just happen. So this morning, you know, my husband and I talk every morning um, just about things and what we did yesterday, what we can do better today. And um, I, I had to apologize to him because I can be a little bit overbearing. And I know that he's going through some difficult times um, as well, you know, with his, you know, so some, yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. But um, yeah, I had to, Take a step back and the thought that came into my mind is I yeah had to apologize for pointing out things that I, I, I always have this thing that I've got to tell them what I didn't like and maybe I should you know steer away from that and maybe I should if I had the prompting this morning then I should just be we should work together it doesn't matter what he's not doing it doesn't matter what I'm because I we never actually talk about what I'm not doing right. Uh, he always he always seems to be the topic of our conversation, and I think when he's already going through something um, as disheartening as he is, then I'm adding to it when I'm pointing or finding fault. So I thought I did apologise to him this morning, and we did talk, and we just thought we both agreed. Let's just do this journey together. Let's just continue together. Let's just try and work on it together. And perhaps we'll, we'll get some better results. <laughs> no, no marriage is perfect, people. Let me just say, it doesn't matter that you've been going to church forever. You, you're always going to have some little discomfort, some affliction, whatever. But I like the message here where it says for her to comfort her husband. And she did it in a very meek, humble way. And I'm, I'm not that person. Um, I'm quite stubborn, and yeah, I, I, this is a, a timely reminder of how we should be towards our husbands. And, and also, he mentions, the thing council mentions how our husbands should be to us. So we should be supporting each other because we're on the same team. Um, so I like that. And the second part, you know, actually... Before I go to Etty, I'm going to share with you these two quotes that stood out to me about marriage. An ideal marriage is a true partnership between two imperfect people striving together 
to complement the other, to keep the commandments and to do the will of the Lord. I was so in us and I'm like two imperfect people struggling together to complement each other. And the other one is found, and I'll, it's by Thomas S. Monson. In marriage, as in all relationships, happiness abounds when there is respect for each other. One most Oh, one must have a capacity to work out problems, a willingness to give and take, and a genuine unselfishness. We need to learn. Uh, we're going to work on it. Um, yeah, it was something that stood out to me. So I'd like to hear what stood out to you too, also from um, Emma Smith's counsel. What scripture, what verse did you like? Anyway, we have a, a living example of Emma Smith's work and we're going to watch it very soon when Etty comes into her life and her scripture is found in verse 12 and it says oh where am I it says for my soul delighteth in the song of the heart yea the song of the righteous is a prayer unto me that shall be answered with a blessing upon their heads so at this time we're going to introduce Etty Okay, Etty, let's bring you in. Great. Let's see if we can get in here. Um, oh, yeah! Hi! Hi. Hi. How are you? so good. It usually takes us ages to bring people in, but man. Really? The connection of love and love. So we're a bit disorganized on this end, but hi, um, hi. Yeah, thanks for having us. Okay, so I felt inspired to choose a, a wonderful family. I thought I was thinking, who is a family who comes to my mind to, to sing a beautiful song for us? Hi. Uh, this family right here. <laughs> we're not, I, I, I'm going to have to say, we're not singers or anything, you know. That's but, not bad um, at all. <laughs> but we're. <laughs> so um, I don't want to scare any viewers out there, but we just love. <laughs> being um of service so i hope that speaks oh, to so our voices man um uh and before we go any further etty Hi. please introduce yourself Hi. and your family Hi. okay Hello. okay are you ready so um this is my wee little family and we're gonna start here you're gonna introduce yourself say hi 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 bj so this is wee VJ. This is my youngest boy. And over Hi, here. VJ. Torrance. My name is Torrance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so Hi, oldest. And then I do have a wee older girl. Um, she's really my little sister, but we've had her since she was a baby. She's camera shy, but she, Ruth, oh. is sitting behind us and she's listening. Hi, Ruth. <laughs> she, she says hello i hear you <laughs> that is yeah. so cool and and my mom yes and oh so is that your mom yes she, he's he's introducing me and my and mommy is in mom yes and my yes. say hi yes hi how old are you today how old are you Three. Oh, three. Mm -hmm. That's a big number. <laughs> and three going on ten. And we got four and eight. <laughs> four and eight? Yeah. Four and eight. Oh, okay. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Wow. Good counting. <laughs> Good counting, son, though. <laughs> I have a question for you. Why mm -hmm. is this song of importance to you? Why is this song important to us? Why don't you hold it? I don't know how long <laughs> this going to last. Um, so the song that we are going to attempt to sing <laughs> wait, son, wait, is Love at Home. I think um, what we try and do is um, you know, create an atmosphere at home where um, the kids know that they can always, it's a safe haven Hi. for them and that there always is love for them at home. So 
um, yeah, so that's why we chose the song. It's a beautiful song. Are you ready to sing? You when you hear us sing. <laughs> we will love it anyway. Doesn't matter. We're singing with you too, by the way. Okay. Ow. Wait, bum. Wait, you bum. Okay, so love at home. After, after. Are you, you going to sing first and last verse or just one verse? Yeah, we're just going to sing one verse and the chorus. Okay. <laughs> Is that all right? Yeah. Would you like to choose someone to say the closing prayer in your in your family? Who would like to do the prayer? Me. VJ, you want to do the prayer? Okay. All right. VJ mm. wants to do the closing <clears throat> prayer. Okay, that sounds good to me. Okay, so Mommy, give us a night read. One, two. There is beauty all around when there's love at home. There is joy in every sound when there's love, love at home. Peace and plenty here above, smiling sweet on every side time to softly sweetly glide when there's love at home love at home love at home time to softly sweetly glide when there's love at home. Beautiful singing. BJ, I heard you. Did you sing Tara's beautiful singing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Let's do a closing prayer. You're going to do closing prayer? Do you want him to do it now? Yes, yes, please. Oh. Yeah, go, baby. Thank you, listen. You've got to do it loud, so. I miss you, dear father. Thank you, this mom. My need to look after you, me to work. I feel sometimes you need to go and be me to go up after you need to go. I feel sometimes in the mom and the children. And see time Luna Patrick and Patrick a blessing everyone and a blessing everyone thank you Jesus Christ Amen 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 What a beautiful prayer VJ You were so brave <laughs> and you were so clever and so smart to give a beautiful <laughs> prayer like that. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. We love you. Bye. Thanks, Itty. <laughs> Thanks, Torrance. Bye. 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 Keep up the good work.